Here. Schmidtke. Here. Riley. Present. Pedestras. Present. Cloutier. Here. Budney. Here. Van, Van Oz. So we have a complete commission. Uh, the first item of business, two items of business I want to mention to start with. We're going to change the order of the agenda a little bit. I'll take the prerogative of the chairman. A number of people are here tonight, I understand, from Hawthorne to talk about the drainage issue that comes up later on the agenda. So we're going to move you up to the second. But the first item is we have in the audience a young man named Jordan Bidigari, and I'm going to make a presentation to Jordan. He's the son of the owner of a construction company, a Bid Gary Construction, and this past summer uh, they rebuilt uh, the water main and sewers for two miles along West River Road from, uh, from um, basically Parkway up to Church Road. And it was a very tight construction because of all the trees and the age of the area. And they had to keep traffic open at all times. And I want to read this certificate. So the certificate says, this is a certificate of appreciation. Now, we don't often do this for contractors. But when you, when you listen to this, I hope you'll understand how successful we were with this complicated project. It was over a $4 million project. So it says, this will acknowledge that during the 2018 spring to fall construction season, Bidgary contractors undertook a difficult major water main replacement and street resurfacing project along a two-mile section of West River Road in Gross Hill Township. This project was a challenge because the narrow work area, the need to maintain traffic, and from numerous homes that front West River Road, the encounter of numerous unknown and unrecorded, this is interesting, it's an old section of road, numerous unrecorded old utility lines, the need to allow access for mail delivery, refuse pickup, and access to West Shore Golf Club and Westcroft Garden Center, and the need to save trees and preserve as much as possible the homeowner's landscaping, private utilities like uh, sprinkler systems and so forth, and electric lines that go out to docks under the road, big issue, and driveway approaches all while maintaining a safe and dust-free construction area. Township officials received very few complaints and when complaints were received, they were quickly resolved by the contractor. Coordination with Wayne County inspectors, other utility providers, police and fire personnel were excellent. Numerous property owners along West River Road have expressed gratitude over the manner in which the job was performed. The personnel of Bid Gary Construction were all at times courteous and often helpful in recommending minor changes in plans as the project progressed, and I would indicate that some of the recommendations they made actually saved us money. Therefore, for the reasons stated above and on behalf of the citizens of Gross Hill, the Gross Hill Township DPS Commission wishes to acknowledge and extend our deep appreciation to Bid Gary Construction Company, its owners, supervisors, and all of its employees for a job well done. It is our pleasure to work with such a professional firm and a group of tradesmen. Uh, awarded this 11th day of December, 2018. So. Thank you very much. I also want to talk about um, this project. Um, at our APWA uh, luncheon last week, our project was nominated for a project of the year under the transportation. Um, Jordan was there to help accept um, uh, this award as well. So on behalf of the township and the DPS, we appreciate uh, doing business with you. You guys were really great to work with. Thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> and uh, we hope that we can keep the great success going in the future. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so. Appreciate it. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Jordan. Well, here's a certificate. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is ours. Yeah, but, but you received, they, they received this one. And Miranda said APWA, that's in American, Michigan section. I think the biggest issue was resolving citizen complaints. Yes. We didn't have many. That's always the biggest. But, but when people <laughs> asked the question, they were courteous to them. And uh, also, John Kind was our manager. He took care of things.
Thank you. Uh, just a comment, Bill. Uh, I've been doing this for 40 years. That's a first. That's a first. Uh, oftentimes you you deal with so many unknowns in the construction industry, especially road construction. And these guys did a stand-up job, and that's why they get jobs like this, and we'd be sure to use them again. It's a great company. Back when we bid the job, one of the six bidders was a contractor that has a very bad reputation, and luckily they weren't the low bidder. Even if they were, we probably would not have awarded it to them, but uh, that's the way it goes. So we, we were fortunate. It all worked out pretty well. So you got to witness this. That's great, right? <laughs> so we have a number of business items. I'm going to put them off for now. Is, so I have to ask a question. Is everybody here for the Hawthorne drain? Uh, everybody is? At our last meeting, uh, Commissioner Budney, who's also a trustee of the township, you know, we lost our road millage issue that was on the November 6th ballot by 3,000 3, votes in favor, 3,300 against. And um, Mr. Budney invited anybody who voted no to come in and, to this meeting today and explain to us what was your thinking. Why, why did you vote no? Was the two mills too much to ask for? Uh, and some of you could address that if you want to. A lot of people feel that, you know, we're a township, not a city, so all the roads are owned by the county. A lot of people thought the county would uh, fix the roads. And, uh, you know, Wayne County, like all the other counties in Michigan, and we've studied this issue and tried to explain it, uh, that counties don't have the resources to do a lot of roads where there's low volume. What we're in competition with is traffic volumes in other communities, whether it's Jefferson Avenue in Gross Point or Jefferson Avenue here or Seven Mile in Livonia or Ford Road or Wayne Road in Romulus. I mean, the, our traffic volumes are light and our accident volumes are light. So when we're rated, we come up uh, last on the list, our roads do. That's not a bad thing. We don't have the traffic volumes. We don't have the accidents. Uh, we, we Last October, a year ago in 2017, we secured from Wayne County their top 100 paving projects. Let's assume each one's about a mile long. And their top 100 projects, and that's about a five to six year plan for them. We're not on the list for any major paving. Now, they did a little resurfacing up on East River this year, and they did participate with some of our resurfacing on West River Road because we asked them to do that. But as far as major improvements to Meridian and other roads on the island, hopefully that with some additional revenues and our new governor, let's fix the darn roads, um, that, that they'll get some more money and be able to do a little more on our community. So we ask them every year to assist us. So later tonight we're going to talk about neighborhood streets where they have given us and other townships in Wayne County a $300,000 grant, so to speak, but this is for neighborhood streets like Manchester Road. If you're familiar with Manchester, or if you, were, if you had public streets, Glen, uh, Hawthorne Glen Drive would be uh, a local road. Uh, church, um, so, Gray's Drive by the high school, that's a local road. But the primary roads are like Meridian and East River and Parkway and so forth. So at any rate, um, I guess that's enough on that. Does anybody want to speak to the road issue or not? All right, let's talk about Hawthorne Drain. Uh, we have a, I think some of you have received a copy of the resolution. Uh, I was asked if I could provide it to a couple of people, and I did. And so what, I'm going to ask the staff to read the, the motion. There's a motion going to be put before us. Lorinda? Yes, the motion is to authorize the Charles E. Rains Company to prepare an RFP for the Hawthorne drain cleanup. I want to add to that before it's made that it should be that we bid the project. If we, if we do prepare an RFP, which is a request for proposals, that we, they go out and bid the project by mid-January. Uh, we prepare our budget for, all of, for water, sewer, roads, garbage, and everything else that this commission is responsible for. We have to prepare a budget in February. So at our mid-meeting, our meeting in two months, it's, we, we look at our budget, 
And it would be nice if we had a figure to confirm our engineer's estimate. So the motion would read, authorize our engineers to prepare a request for proposals for the Hawthorne drain cleanup and go out for bids by mid-January. I want to add that, go out for bids by mid-January. Is there anybody wish to make that motion? Um, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and supported that we ask our engineers to prepare a request for proposals on the Hawthorne drain cleanup project as proposed uh, conceptually and bid it by mid-January. So now it's open for discussion. We have a report. We have drain funds that we could use for this if we proceed with this project. So that's the issue. And now with all the people here, does any commissioner wish to speak at this point or else let the people speak? All right, so I'll invite the spokesman if you have. I know there's a couple. Just identify yourself, you don't, your name and... I'm David Goodwin. I'm the president of Hawthorne Woods Association. I live on Nathan Drive. And I'm Gary Latondres. I live at 9980 Hawthorne Glen Drive. And I'm the president of Hawthorne Place Condo Association of 124 units. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Go ahead. Um, I brought a couple of photos, and just for reference, so everybody knows what we're talking about. Can you hear me? This far from the yep. mic? Yep, you're fine. <laughs> uh, this is the Meridian School, and the Hawthorne uh, Woods are these properties here, and Hawthorne Place is on this side. Frenchman's Creek comes down, where are we, down here, uh, in my backyard, and uh, it originally, apparently, went straight across here before the school was built. So when the school was put in, they blocked off the drain and or the creek and made a drain around the playground. And that's where everything's backing up because we also have a large pond here in the backyards of Nathan properties and uh, I mean of uh, Woods properties and Place properties uh, and another smaller pond over here. Both these ponds drain into this ditch at the corner of the school ground. And uh, when we did it, and the problems we're running into is every year the water in the creek backs up, whoops, go the other way, uh, more and more. Uh, we've got an electrical box in the backyard on our side of the creek that gets surrounded by water when, when it rains. Uh, couple of those um, and it's upside down too David. It, yeah turn them the other way same thing though uh, on the other side on the pond uh, this is uh, when it's dry there's a backyard with a sign that says uh, no trespassing and when it rains it looks like that uh, and there is a backyard leading up to a porch, a walkout basement. More of that. Here's a close-up of it. If you can make it out, it's uh, just a few feet from the, pat the concrete entrance to the back entrance of that house. Uh, some more of it. I also noticed, and this just occurred to me, I'm no biologist, but we've had excessive uh, uh, algae and duckweed in the pond over the last couple years and it just occurred to me that uh, the lack of flow of the water might be part of the reason why that's a greater problem than it's been in past years. But this is the corner of the school ground where it drains into the ditch uh, you can see the playground in the background here and more of that. This is the area I think that uh, someone came out and pulled a couple of logs and uh, debris out of the ditch and the water went down immediately by a foot or two. Uh, so that's the problems we're dealing with and uh, going back to these backyard uh, going into the back door of the house, you know, we're on the verge of having to sandbag 
to, and I don't think that would even save uh, water getting into the basements on a couple of the properties there. So it's pretty severe, and it's uh, any time there's a heavy rain, especially in the spring, but throughout the summer and the fall too. It just happened again last month. I have a question. Is is this worse than it was a year or two ago? Definitely. Yeah. This has been, been by far the worst worse. year. Progressively worse, but never have we retained such high water levels for virtually almost the whole summer yeah. and into the winter. And the water levels are still high. The, that sign is still out in the middle of the water that he showed. Yeah, and I'm, I've been there since uh, 2000, roughly. And like you say, it's just been progressive. Everything to add? Well, just that we appreciate your help and, and uh, the school people that allowed us to go back there and look, and they, they came with us, and we took photos that I, I provided uh, back in the spring, and I think I more recently sent more photos, and uh, as has Dave, so we certainly appreciate your consideration, and we're very anxious to get this behind us should we have... I don't know, we've been lucky so far in December, but we're in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd hate to have somebody dealing with uh, sandbags and flooded basements because the water level is high right now. Gary, you said the, the school people went out with you? Yes. When we, when we were first wanting to look, I mean, it's almost very difficult to observe from the Hawthorne Place side. So we wanted to get around these big pine trees. So I asked the superintendent of schools, and they sent the business manager out with us, and we took some photos. So they, this spring, yes. Because I think the reason I ask is I think John had indicated to me that if we were ever going to do a clean out of any kind, you'd have to access the drain area from the school property. And they said uh, very quickly and politely that uh, we were welcome to go on their property to clean out the ditch, uh, just to keep in mind that they had no funds to help. Yeah, they were. <laughs> we already knew that about the funding. I'm surprised they said that in that order. <laughs> now, we were uh, very careful not to trespass uh, or, you know, even to look like, you know, who are these yahoos wandering yeah. around the schoolyard, you know, so. All right. Uh, Anything else, Dad? Would anybody else like to speak? No, uh, I'm Chris Matthews. I live at uh, 226, just, just 226 just James. Yeah. Uh, five of the seven units on James Drive flooded July 3rd, 2013. And it, it just came in. There was nothing you were going to stop it with. I think Mildred had sandbags, but it didn't stop it. And... Um, a sump pump would not have helped that at all. And we found, uh, you know, you don't have flood insurance there. And flood insurance covers you if, if five acres floods. So, you know, you're, if your home floods and you have flood insurance and it hasn't flooded on five acres, you're still going to pay for it. So it cost many of us uh, quite a bit of money to redo walkout basements. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. We are more fearful of this because it's happened before. And five years ago, somebody from the township did come out and clean that out. And it was better for a good three years. The last two years, it's been worse again. So I just wanted you to have a little bit of that history here. Thank you. So, so somebody from the township came out uh, five years ago, you say? Five years ago. Mm -hmm. What did they do? They cleaned out some debris that was in there. Is that not right, Dave? Was that in front of the culvert or along the drain itself? I was thinking of, I'd be thinking of a different incident some time ago. Actually, when the uh, Hawthorne Woods was being built, uh, the developer built a construction road along the school property uh, behind Hawthorne Woods and actually put a, a culvert in over, uh, over in the creek. And when they left, they never took it out. And what we found out was the culvert under Hawthorne Drive was a four-foot culvert, 
and the culvert under the construction road was a three foot culvert for the water to finish going through. And the township did bring a backhoe out and just dug the culvert out, removed the culvert so it was open. And that helped some, but it still didn't uh, now keep the flooding from happening. In our plan, from our initial plan, there were two culverts. There's one at the south end of the school property and one right by you. We call it the north end, where it enters mm -hmm. the drain, drainage course. Um, and that's the one that, the, as I understand it, a couple of weeks ago, some tree limbs were removed from the front and the water went down a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure. I thought that was more on the corner of the property about a school rather than... Pardon? It was uh, uh, Mr. Matt Sipe, one of your engineers. Was it oh, John, you were there too. Matt was there first and I joined him. Was it closer to the foot of Nathan? Which, which or one was it? Corner it was the, playground. the corner of the playground. Yeah, the corner of the playground is further down where the ponds come in. I think there's a culvert from the small pond that goes in there. Yes. Impossible to see. Yeah. I think the think in talking with our engineers and staff as far as cleaning the culvert that I'm thinking of at least it'd be cheaper to just replace it uh, than try to clean it there is a couple culverts but the one that seems to be a problem but I, I don't think I mentioned what the other thing we saw when we looked at the culvert actually the was it the west side of the playground uh, the back end of the playground in that ditch, there's trees that came out of one branch, one side of the uh, ditch, went horizontal to the other side of the ditch, and turned right degree and went up. So the trunk was like six inches above the water flow going across, and there were two or three of them. That basically, when the water goes up a little bit, it becomes a barrier. Um, and so th those two or three trees probably need to come out. Okay. The drain. We do the clean out. We'll clean everything out of there. So we're actually going to go west around that corner to just past your electrical side. Okay. There you are. Gonna... In, in so we'll go, the... go south to where it makes the turn to go west, and then go west for another 50, 60 feet. Another question that the commission talked about a little bit and, and I was asked to discover another um, gentleman another question I was asked to ascertain or at least I thought was reasonable is in your association dues you uh, do you collect money for drainage and is it um, is so we pay we pay drainage taxes Pay what drainage tax oh drainage taxes I know that uh, can, can I have your name, sir? My name's Lou Piggin. I live at Hawthorne, okay, uh, 9731. I happen to live on the pond, one of the ponds in question. And I think there's more than just, there may be more than one problem that you, sh you gotta be attacking here. If you notice up here, Dave was talking about this area here flooding. Yes. Because, because of the school coming in here and Frenchman Creek used to run through here, but if are you guys talking about a, a a culvert in here in this area? Because if you are, I think they were talking about just replacing the culvert at the corner. I know they're talking about that, but yeah. is that also causing some backup for you? The trees in the drain ditch and the and here road, in this ditch, uh, both sides of the playground. This and this. Yeah. Okay. It's important to know that there's two areas here that need to be looked at. This area, which would be the north side of the playground and the west side of the playground. I think that's what I live in saying. This, I live in this unit right here, basically. This middle unit here. And luckily, the grade where my home is is much higher than the grade of the Hawthorne uh, Woods condos back here. And even... Uh, uh, Marsha's condo on the end here. She get she's got water almost coming up to her deck, don't you? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I mean, I watch these people, and my wife and I watch these <coughs> after it rains. We can see the water coming up, and it almost almost comes up to their their uh, doorstep. So it's an it's a, it's it's a bad deal, and hopefully 
you can get it resolved by, by bidding it on, on, on January. I don't know how quick all this works, uh, whether you can do the work in the wintertime or do you have to wait till the spring, but it's going to be pretty hard to get back there if you wait, if it's not dry or frozen. and or frozen. I would think now is probably the best time to get back there. But anyway, I just wanted to put my two cents. Sure, well, in. I think <laughs> if we took if we take bids in January, uh, we'll have the bid amounts in early February, and if if it looks like things we get a good bid and we can proceed, if if that's what we do, um, we can put in the specification that the work's to be done in March. Spring flooding. I mean, we 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 have the engineers have the ability to do that if we proceed. So. We had machinery back there when we did uh, some tree cutting and trimming, and we asked the, the tree trimmer to try to remove a, a, a branch that was in the that was stuck up against the. Uh, I don't. I couldn't even see the, the culvert. To be honest with you, but right in this area here, he couldn't budge it. I mean, there was no way he could budge it. So, you need machinery in there we're, to we're, do the work. We've done other drain cleanouts. We've gotten heavy machinery in, big excavators and so forth. Dozers, whatever's needed. Thank you. If you'll allow me, this one photo was taken in the spring, and it is essentially just south of that culvert coming out of the pond behind our building. You can't see it except in the winter or early spring, but that's some of what is in that area behind that's, the That looks like debris. It is. That's debris. <laughs> it's not fun to run a Where'd it come from? I have no idea. There's a lot of broken concrete in that area back there also. Now that's what I'm showing them, Lou. That's what that is. And fallen trees. I mean, that whole stretch along the back end of the schoolyard is a jungle. Right. I mean, you, after it first came to us, we, you and I tried to walk it and were unable to see a foot in front of you. So. Too much greenage in the summertime. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishes to comment at this point? All right, I'll turn it over to the commission. Any commissioners have a comment? We have a motion on the floor. Mr. Van Huss. I just have a question. Les and uh, John, this is, is this a, <clears throat> excuse me, is the Frenchman's Creek a Wayne County drain? Les, I'll let you answer that one. I don't think so. I don't think it's Wayne County drain. I think yeah, it's part of our. Uh, all right. I, I don't think it is either uh, because I know we've done some, through the airport group, we've done some cleaning up to clean off some of the drains that were coming back from Rucker and through that area, which may be or may not be Wayne County. If it's not a Wayne County drain, then we don't have to deal with that issue because that could be an issue getting there approval to whatever we have to do there if we don't have to do that then we've got some latitude where we can move on this thing but <clears throat> i think we need a topo going all the way because if i'm not mistaken unless this thing runs just past the golf course and then down that stretch and becomes frenchman's creek this is the ultimate continuation to frenchman's well creek. this is another finger of it the finger that's in the golf course is where the two big ponds are at Right. And this finger does end up in that one. In what one? The one where the two big ponds are in Hawthorne Glen. Yeah. That's Frenchman's Creek comes right off the golf course, goes into those ponds, and then it goes down. Um, Alta Loma. Alta Loma. And then this one comes over and ends up cutting into Loma. All right. And there's a lot of stuff that's blocking it all the way, Head all the south, trees. Ted. I can see this is a huge project. Well, well, a lot of the area we haven't gotten into, uh, what the idea was is when we get started. I mean, this is a conservative estimate that they, what I asked them to do is I said, put a, extra money in it so that we, we might encounter some things that we might have to do a little more removal than we thought. And, so and I, think, it I think it's important that we do a topo going back to the to the original do, Frenchman's it, Creek. It'll be a lot easier during because construction. Because if that creek, it, with the water as high as it is right now, we're getting a lot of flooding issues where we never had them before. And, and it, it could be significant enough that that water in Frenchman's Creek gets high enough 
that it does affect the ability of this drain system to flow. Right. And it could be, a, it could be, I mean, we could be biting off a monster. Here. Well, over the last several years, we've had two little little projects in Alta Loma area. The one, right. the one that, uh, or the man's, the water was coming right through his house uh, down right. Alta Loma, next to, uh, a little bit south of Alta Loma Drive. And then the one that was in the back, and I don't know if you remember that, that was five years ago where the backyard of people that butted up against part of Hawthorne, I think it was that Nancy Court area, they had uh, two feet of water in their backyard for a long time. Uh, and we uh, addressed that by reditching a drain along the edge of Hawthorne, and I think it probably goes into the area we're talking about. Yeah, it does. So, um, anyway. I, I think we do need to get the engineering. We do need to get an estimate. <clears throat> I'm, well, we have an engineer's estimate. And, and I'm... Well, the the idea was, you know, and and I know that it goes into the area behind Loma Circle, and when you go look at Loma Circle, even this summer I was out looking at things, and there's water standing in the open space and a lot of unbuildable property right. at Loma Circle, and I think it's known to be a wetland, it holds water, it's part of Frenchman's Creek. Maybe someday there'll have to be an outlet that goes to the river. I, I think we I think we need to get a request for proposal out on this thing. If I can add in, this comes down from here, down along the playground, between the playground and the cemetery, on down to the airport, down uh, by the apartments yes. down there, right. where it goes back into Frenchman Creek down to Fort it, Yacht Club. Is that the way it runs? Yeah, it goes down to Fort Yacht Club. Have you walked that? Uh, you can see it coming through there, yeah. Okay, because now that kind of takes it away from Loma Circle and moves yeah. it closer to the airport property and the, the the fields out here, the soccer fields and that it goes area. down the east side of the cemetery. So I, I, I'm not sure that that would have an involvement with the Loma Circle property, which is important to know. So I think we need we need to look at it. and and part of it may be some of the airport property too. I don't know. Something we have to look at. Well, uh, I have to ask the question to Les or John. Is the outfall right at uh, Grow Road? That drain actually goes, continues west. When the turn makes the 90 degree behind the playground, it turns west. It goes down to Loma Circle, underneath Loma Circle to the west, underneath Loma Circle to the south, and comes out right at Grow Road at that little bike path bridge. That's By the, the cemetery. Outlet. Correct. By the cemetery. So it doesn't run along the east side of the cemetery. It runs on the west side of the cemetery. Okay. All right. So it actually yeah. it goes like this, parallels underneath of the first part of Loma Circle, turns south, comes through underneath the road on Loma Circle again, and enters Frenchman's Creek right here at the bridge. Yeah, I, I'm just I'm a little bit concerned with the high water might being affecting that. You and know, like that, Bill had mentioned, Frenchman's Creek up. If it doesn't have any any place to drain, we could have a real issue here. The high water did affect the ponds, the two big ponds that uh, Palmer put in, and he had to put a back water valve in to stop the water from coming back yeah. and filling the ponds up more. So I did, we've got a number of issues, but I think we do need to go out for a request for proposal on this. Any other commissioners have anything ready to vote? If there are no more questions. Well, we have a motion on the floor. The motion is to authorize our engineers to prepare a request for proposals for the Hawthorne drain cleanup as, as the, based on the current project and bid the project by mid-January. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. So we're on our way. We'll communicate this to our engineers and uh, we'll, we'll keep um, you, you, Dave, and Gary informed us of what's going on as Please. the president. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for You're welcome out. to stay for the rest of our meeting. <laughs> we're we're going to talk yeah, about, you know, it's interesting. We're going to talk about yeah, our sewage on. plant. And uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being here. Wait. Like rats <laughs> off a downing ship. <laughs> if we served uh, popcorn, would you stay? Hey, Greg, you must be a young guy. We'll take a one-minute break here. Well, just stay here, okay. just follow me around. Okay, don't, don't, don't take off.
We'll continue with our. I will just wait another minute here. Anybody watching? People are leaving the uh, chamber, so we'll give them a chance to. Commissioners all here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one snuck out? <laughs> give, us, give us one more minute. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. Um, We're back on number five. What's that? We're back on number five. We have to approve the agenda still. Move to approve. <laughs> approve the rest of the agenda. Move, uh, Move to approve. Second. Second. Second for All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, <laughs> approval of the minutes and approve. to approve. Hold on. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Second. Number six, Riley. Um, next, we have approval of our minutes in November 13th meeting. I moved, Lenny. Approval? Supported. Okay. The minutes are approved. I'm sorry. All in favor, indicate <laughs> by saying aye. 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 Bills? Item number seven is approval of the bills. Vouchers found on pages seven through 11 for our sewage plant, water, and sewer systems. Any questions? So move to approve. Support. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Next, we have our review of statements of revenues and expenditures. Any comments? If not, we'll receive and file those. Next, we have uh, our approval of our treasurer's report for November of 2018. You all have copies of that? Any, any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the treasurer's report. The treasurer's report. Support. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, all the public has now left the chamber. <laughs> and the building. So uh, action item number one is the Neighborhood Local Road Initiative. Um, you know, we talked about getting together to drive the roads. What I did is I asked John Keim and Lorinda and our engineers to drive the roads and come up with some recommendations. Over the um, last year, I, a couple of comments I received uh, that I noted, and I talked to Phil Kennedy about a couple of these. And so we have this map. It's gonna be hard to get it out. I'm gonna go from the, the south to the north. We have improvements basically starting at the very south end in Swan Island area. Uh, proving an intersection, and uh, we've got 26 projects numbered with cost estimates. Uh, I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at this. Have you all had a chance to study this? John, you can, you can get it. You want to go through it a little bit, John? Well, you're there. You want to go from south to north on it? Okay. John. Well, anyway, Thanks. starting at Swan Island, we have uh, improvements at at uh, Rio on Rio Road, where there's some very bad sections of asphalt. Intersection at Swan Island, Swan Island Drive, and then we move on to um, uh, uh, improvements uh, on Manchester again, and I think item number five on Manchester's. Um, Quantity of about 15 square yards. I got to pull the cost estimate out. Go ahead. I was going to get oh, okay. grab the cost that. estimate. I've got it here. What's that? Miss number four, Elba. All right. I want to find my cost estimate. Hold on. Number four is Elba Road. So if you're familiar with Elba Road, when you get over the bridge, uh, there's some very bad sections on the east side of the bridge, that asphalt sections that need to be repaired. Uh, Manchester, item number five, there's an area. Uh, and they only have $1,200 for that. I thought it was a bigger section of concrete. It looks it's just small. Gray's Drive, uh, Gray's Drive 
is not depicted properly on this map uh, by the high school. We just threw out a figure of fifty thousand uh, dollars. It goes pretty quickly, but that road has taken a lot of money uh, over the years, and um, it's depicted with uh, six and seven item six is Gray's Drive, and then the seven, where it says seven on the map, you all see that on Gray's Drive? That's really supposed to be Park Lane, and it's not shown on Park Lane. That has to be corrected. So I made a note to correct that with the engineers. But there are some sections, John, on Gray's Drive in the area where seven is. That's why it's probably a mistake, because both east and west of Park Lane, there's need for some uh, repairs on Gray's Drive. Park Lane section, which would be seven, is actually uh, north of uh, Gray's Drive. We started to do a lot of repairs there last year, and that would continue. Would that be, uh, uh, would that be right at the corner going out, going north, or farther down? Be farther down. Okay. It'd be between there and LaSalle Court. Okay. Uh, item number eight is showing out in the water. It's really just a <laughs> general thing that we we propose to do about $100,000 worth of joint ceiling throughout the island to be determined by staff. And then we have a whole bunch items, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, are, and 19 and 20 are all in the um, area uh, bounded by Church Road between Church and Ferry. Potom yeah, Potawatomi, Potawatomi Woods. Where we have a lot south. of concrete roads yes. to be repaired. And um, I dropped off at, well, O'Donnell, 22, 23. Just a lot of them in Massey Court. That's where you can see the concentration of all the numbers. As I looked at this map, the one that struck me that I would like to add John, I want you to put your finger on it. It's right at the, the north point of the island where Park Lane comes together with Meridian. Everybody knows that corner. There's a cul-de-sac on the end of it. I always thought it was private road. John tells me it's public. So there's a section just, just north of where they come together. The pavement's been torn up their asphalt pavement for years. So I would like to repair that. So what I did arbitrarily without, I did this today actually, I think that that repair is gonna be close to the same repair at Swan Island Drive intersection. So I just took 20,000 out of the joint ceiling. So drop that from 105 to 85,000 is what I did. And I don't know if that's okay with everybody, but what I was gonna to offer to the commission, you see the map, if you have something you'd like that you know should be done, you can speak now about it. We can add it to this list. Because what, what's going to happen is this is going to go back to the township engineers and get this ready to go to, with a couple little corrections, like on Gray's Drive, Park Lane, and then if we would add that section I'm talking about at the very north point of the island, uh, have the map corrected, and this is going to go to the township board to send to the county for next year, and we're going to get ready and go out and bid it. Any comments from any of you? Uh, the only thing I, you know, I'd say is uh, when when we talk about doing road work, I think we're always safe because there's so much to do. Uh, it's just picking and 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 again, what I, you know, what I hope the people would appreciate. Uh, uh, we've covered the island. It's not one one little area north or south or whatever that's favored. Uh, everybody gets a little bit of it. And uh, that's just the way we have to peck at it and get these things done. Uh, if if you've been around the island at all and know any of these areas, uh, uh, you know they're all worthy of uh, being fixed. So this is a neighborhood street program, meaning streets within neighborhoods, not major roads like Parkway, Meridian, East River. This is neighborhood streets, like Manchester and Grace Drive. And some sections of Park Lane and so forth. Coventry, Burning Bush. So 
go around the table. Uh, do you have any other suggestions, Ted? Les? Oh, looks pretty good. Bill? No. All for it. Okay. So then um, I'm suggesting the motion. Well, there's a correction to be made on showing Park Lane, but that's simple. But I'm suggesting we add that very north section on the cul de sac at the north end of the island where Meridian and Park Lane come together and make that repair for $20,000 and take the money from the 105 that we were going to do with joint ceiling. And obviously, if the bids come in good, uh, we might we any extra money we'd have we put into joint ceiling. So with that, I'd entertain a motion for approval to go out for bids. Motion, support. Any further discussion? If not all in favor. Indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passed. We can all fold our maps up. Take a minute here. <laughs> Now does the second group of people get to leave or Okay. <laughs> 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 Next item on the agenda is the purchase of a snow plow. Staff, Lorinda. Uh, we make a motion to approve the quote from sales equipment for the purchase of a blade crate snow plow with control in the amount of $5,979. This is a, a replacement blade for the new truck number 14. It'll be a V plow, and we are able to obtain some of the funds through the disposal of the existing or the uh, old truck number five. Is this is this the brand new truck with the? Correct. It was now, prepped from right, and the, uh, and we said we didn't need a plow, and we went through all that, and now a couple months in, we need a plow. So, what's uh, and uh, although although it said uh, <clears throat> um, that the plow is is worn out, evidently it's not worn out enough. It's going to be placed on another truck to be used. So. The purchaser is going to rebuild that plow. The purchaser bought the truck and the plow. Oh, this is not. We're getting okay. That's the truck that's, we're getting rid of. Correct. Okay. Of, okay. Yeah. okay. I'm missing. I thought this was, was mm -mm. keeping really worn with us. So, mm -mm. but uh, uh, I, I just, I just wonder why did we just see this now? Well, we didn't purchase the blade. When yeah, we bought we, the new we, truck. We, we, said, we were going to yeah. use the old one. Right. And then when the truck was sold with the plow. Oh, okay. Okay. He wanted the plow. Okay. And actually, this split, this plow came in cheaper than the one we would have purchased cheaper. with the new truck. <laughs> the original. This one, yeah. yes. Yeah. Came in no, cheaper. No, I, I, yeah, okay. The the wording, I wasn't following what was going on. That's fine. And it's a DXT. Yes, sir. Okay, so the mu funds are budgeted. People. <laughs> funds are budgeted, correct. Any more questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. I just looking over the two bids, John, uh, one just has three items associated with it, then the other bid is kind of broken down. It has like 10 items associated with it and then some options. Uh, are these bids comparable as to what we're getting? Are we, yes. Is this apples and apples? Correct. Yes. So the same skids, exact plow with same skids and everything. And everything. Bid. And these options that are listed on the uh, higher bid, we don't need any of those. Like I just said to Jim, that was a, the truck was all prepped when we bought it from the dealership. Okay. But we at that time we decided to use the old plow. Okay. The one that we just disposed of. So all now right. that we don't have a plow to put on there, we're going to go ahead and put the new V plow, which is more efficient for everybody. Okay. And then, like Lorinda just mentioned, it's also three hundred dollars cheaper than it was if we would have bought it when we bought the truck. <laughs> Sounds good. And that's the truck I get to use in the wintertime? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With driveway, can yeah, you that's do all. We'll get that one too. <laughs> It'll be a lot of use. We won't overdo it. Overdo it. I got a question. Uh, you got these two, two bids, and there's a place over there on Van Horn Road, west of um, Hall Road and south of Van Horn Road. 
that is a dealer in all kinds of implements. Oh, yeah. Cells? No. 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 Is it current? Is it garden? Uh, landscape current? supply, please. Is it current? Yeah, I did not obtain a, a yeah. quote from them. Yeah, he also carries a boss over there. Yeah. They're pretty much all standard, less. Like I said, that the Canon, who the second bid, that's who we've historically gotten all of our equipment from, and Sells was able to beat them by three hundred dollars. And they're at Van Horn in Woodhaven versus twenty-three mile Shelby Township. Yeah. That answer your question, Les? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't obtain a quote. Yes and no. Yeah. I would like to see a, if somebody go over there and say, hey, how much is this Paul going to cost? Write it down on a piece of paper. And if he comes in lower, I'd go with that one. But as it stands right now, we're going to go to sales. We currently do not have a, uh, he's not one of our listed vendors, but we can certainly obtain a quote from him if you'd like. And if you would like to go to the avenue, we'll file a credit report. And if he's cheaper, we'll buy it from them. Yeah, just ask. Doesn't hurt to pick up the phone and call. On the on uh, on the uh, Canon, uh, which we had these other things on there. If we took those off, uh, it just just the five uh, yeah five things that are listed. If you took took those off, saying it's already prepped, we already have this stuff. Uh, that that's that becomes five thousand dollars. Yeah, but we've already verbalized the price. <laughs> Okay. Everybody said it out loud. So would it be fair to go get a third one? Well, don't tell the well, guy what the other prices were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's public record. Okay, so I'll try to repeat what I'm hearing. <laughs> but they're the same plow. Yeah, everything's I the mean, same. everything was the same. Somebody's going to make a motion. the blade and the controller to, to work it. Somebody's going to make a motion. The motion would be to uh, award for the purchase of the snow plow to uh, sells based on their quote of 5979 and then go to this uh, so that would be the motion and also to ask staff to go to and get a quote for the same exact equipment from you don't know the name of I it? think it's Kearns I think it's Kearns Brothers something located like that located at uh, West Road West Road no, it's on, on Van, Van Horn Road Van Horn uh, Van Horn and Hall Road, but it's southwest of Van Horn and Hall Road. It's a great big long building. And see if they'll give yeah, you something a, in, in writing. And if they will give you something in writing, if it beats this price, then you can order it from them. Okay. Thank you. Is that the motion? Does that agree with everybody? I'll second that motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you need help, Lorinda? Um, just talk to me. I think you yeah. have it. I got the gist of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Carried. Okay. Next, um, Brenda, manager's report. Well, like I was saying earlier, um, at the American Public Works Association meeting we had last week, um, the West River Road project um, was received an award under the transportation. Um, the project division was um, one million to five million dollars. Uh, as you know, the contractor was Bidegar, and then they have uh, several criteria in which they um, go through. And I'm just going to uh, run through a couple of them. One was um, construct construction schedule management and their con their control techniques. Um, basically, the project was. Um, on time and, and uh, within budget, and like you had uh, said earlier, Bill, um, they made a couple of different suggestions which saved the township some money. Um, they also look at the safety performance and see if there was any lost injuries, which they had none. Uh, they look at community relations um, with um, not only with the township but with also the residents. Um, and they came um, and they did very well in that category. Also, they looked at environmental considerations, um, which they did. They took uh, uh, erosion control measures were taken um, during the construction. They made sure they put those um, filter inlets in all the catch basins, and they made sure they clean up um, every night. 
um, unusual accomplishments. The, they were effective and well organized due to uh, due to due Due diligence was conducted during the planning and design phase of the construction where most of the adverse conditions and issues were limited and controlled prior to the start of construction. And part of that was by holding some of our, um, op our public, um, public meetings with the uh, residents there. They were able to identify certain areas where they had um, underground utilities that were not noted before. Um, another area was um, the lead inspector on the project was uh, they were able to provide us weekly with project um, quantities. Um, not only that, but they uh, kept good tabs on the construction on construction um, on the inspections throughout the week. Also, um, the use of alternative materials funding practices was another category, and they were able to use the Wayne County Hot Mix Asphalt Base Course and the Wayne County Hot Mix Asphalt Top F. And fusible PVC C900 DR18 water main, which was inst instrumental in ensuring the street and the water main will provide a good level of serviceability and remain durable for the recommended design life. So the residents responded positively and they gave us uh, good feedback throughout the whole project, and ultimately the project was under budget and finished on schedule. So, just so every, the commissioners understand. The American Public Works Association is a national organization. There's a Michigan section, and then within the state of Michigan, there's a downriver section, a west side of the state section, a northern Michigan section, a metro Detroit section, a UP section. Yes, you have 20 some communities or more in the downriver there's section. There's a lot of them, yeah, down there. Okay, so. Good job on everybody's part. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next report is for the way, for the wastewater treatment plant issues that we've had. Um, Brian is not he, he's not here this evening. He wasn't feeling well, um, but he did provide me with an update. Um, the first one was on the bar screen system. Um, the DEQ is requesting a hydraulic grade line visual through the screens and across the plant process. Um, OHM is currently working to complete this. Um, this will be submitted to the MDEQ for their approval. Once the MDEQ approves it, we can submit the Part 41 permit application for the screens. Um, I just want to add to that. I, I met with um, Sohail today. And um, I don't know what the hydraulic grade line is. I don't know yeah. if anybody can explain that. But he did say that the concept for the Duperon uh, bar screen equipment was submitted to a gentleman named Doug Early with the MDEQ. And I know that you, Ted, and Jim, as being trustees on our larger prob issues with the permitting, you've met with Doug Early. He's the supervisor for mm -hmm. the MDEQ in the area. He uh, has been very busy with other issues, and he, uh, so Hal told me that he took it home over the Thanksgiving holiday and reviewed all our plans, and he's given his approval, marked up the plans with his approval. It's back to the technicians at OHM, the wastewater treatment plant technicians, to make the adjustments in the plan. He expects by the end of next week that to be done. And uh, so then, then the the so-called Part 41 permit, the national permitting process for final approval of the bar screen can come out back to us, and that can go out for bids. So that's the status of that. Lorinda. The second. Lorinda, just before you, do you know what the the grade line visual uh, hydraulic line is? Do you understand what that? I mean, can you? Shed any light on that? on that one? No. Okay. Thanks. I guess when you know that's a good question, though. So have have Ryan just go ahead and generate up a memo on it, and explain what that thing is, so everybody knows. Because right now we're dealing in a void. That's a good point. If they say it needs to be, then what is it? That's all. Well, it's already underway. <laughs> Whatever it is, I just want to be sure. <laughs> I don't know what it is either. I so. want to be sure it's not a Knuton valve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, elevator. 
Okay, the elevator hoistway ventilation. Since the inspector did not commit to approving the proposal from Guy and Missler, MA Engineering will be issuing their recommendation on the proposed fan on their letterhead to submit to the state inspector. When approved, the cost will be forwarded to the township for approval and authorization. Okay, the reason I met with Sohail today was on this topic. And I don't know if you recall, you know, I, in my experience, and I think Ted would say the same thing, uh, staff and engineers have to maintain a cur courteous relationship with state bureaucrats that regulate you. Okay? You have to have a working relationship. But elected officials and appointed officials, which we are, they don't have to maintain that relationship. My question to Sohail was, at what point, if this can't move forward until the state inspector gives a stamp of approval on something? So so I, so I said, at what point, I wouldn't want to put Ryan in that position or Lorinda <clears> in that position or even Sohail because they have other issues they have to deal with the state inspectors on. But if the, ele if the elevator uh, inspector won't approve something conceptually so we know, can move forward, <clears> then maybe we have to go to his boss and maybe he will. Uh, so I understand that the inspector that's on the job is from Michigan Elevator, retired. And he's new to the state bureaucracy. But at any rate, so Hal told me, he said, give him a chance this week to put a pressure on the state inspector. And if the guy won't commit to the ventilation system, then he would appreciate maybe a call from Mr. Budney and myself and saying we're elected officials or whatever. We want to know what the heck's going on. We can't move forward until... So, so Al said he's going to try to work it out by the end of this week, or we might want to go ahead, Jim, and intervene. Yeah, maybe uh, you yeah, and I. Because it seems sort. like every week this is the type of re or every month, you know, we've been getting this type of thing where the inspector says you got to do something, but I'm not going to tell you if what you want to do is okay. It, it's not making a lot of sense. <coughs> right. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, Sohail can work it out. But if not, yeah, we can uh, we can do that. So that's the status of that. This has been going on for months. What was the primary reason the inspector didn't approve it? He won't said he wouldn't commit. do it. He won't commit. It's not so much that he won't. He, he, just, won't he just won't commit. Won't commit to it. He won't say, uh, yeah, that's but, okay. But it wasn't until a month or ago. Bad, or bad. <clears throat> yeah, but based on he's, what? Well, he's it, not. It wasn't until a month ago, my understanding, that Guy and Messler, so far haven't charged us, came up with a concept for creating a ventilation system in the elevator shaft. And so they came up with a proposal. And they actually went to somebody, another f firm that specializes in ventilation or whatever, and together they came up with a proposal that would be incorporated in the elevator. And they don't want to do any work in the elevator shaft until right. it's, it's ventilated. And if you recall, Ryan said that the mm -hmm. inspector said he was going to shut down the elevator shaft. The same guy that won't commit to a solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. So if the guy's really that kind of person, we can't let this go on forever. Yeah, at this point, he says we can't do it the way we've been doing, but I won't give you an answer on how to do it, so we'll linger it. I, I don't know. There must be something more to it, but I don't know what that is. So, 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 is so Heil now, is going to get back to it. If it doesn't get resolved by the end of this week, get a commitment, then um, I made the offer for you, Jim, <laughs> yeah, no, that's an elected fine. official and that's me, fine. to make a joint phone call to him or his boss. Yeah, there's got to be some facts. You got to get beyond it, right? That are interfering with his, with his commitment. Sound reasonable, everybody? Yes. Okay. So that's where we are on that. End of discussion. End of Next item, John, you're going to give a report on the sanitary sewer cleaning and televising inspection program. Good evening, everyone. Happy to report that our sanitary sewer and cleaning program was very successful this year. Systems divided into five sections, and section number one was our scope for the, this budget year. This section consists of 42,000 of 8 to 12 inch pipe, excuse me, 42,000 linear feet, uh, 17,000 of 15 to 24 inch pipe, 12,000 linear feet of 27 to 48 inch pipe for a total of 71,000 linear feet cleaned and televised. The budget amount was $150,000. We were able to stay $7 under budget due to close monitoring of the project by Lorinda, CE Rains Company, and myself. 
Our contractor, Safeway Transport, did an outstanding job. They were very professional, courteous, and easy to work with. Whenever they encountered an issue such as roots, calcium deposits, or obstructions, or large rocks, they would contact myself to review the video to authorize any additional work. I would recommend extending their contract to proceed to section number two in the spring of 2019. Section two consists of 88,000 linear feet of various pipe size. We, want to con we may want to consider increasing the budgeted amount for 2019 or adding an additional section at the end of the project. Our township engineer, C. Rains Company, are currently evaluating the videotapes using the PAC, which stands for Pipeline and Certification Program format. This is an evaluation tool that puts all systems on a criticality of repair scale. It is used throughout the country to ensure that all system operators are using the same criteria to confirm the best use of repair and or maintenance budgets. We shall be receiving a completed report with the recommendations in the near future from C. Rains Company. Uh, restoration will be completed in the spring to any locations where damage from equipment and easements, especially those along the rear easements of the thoroughfare canal. This area was very wet to do all, due to all the fall rains, and a lot of tire tracks were raised back up from the frost coming out of the ground in the spring. I spoke with numerous homeowners throughout the project and assured them the DPS will complete full restoration. If I have not spoken to you, please contact our office regarding uh, obtain, uh, we can obtain your uh, addresses to get you on the restoration list for the spring. So the project went outstanding well. Contractor did a great job and highly recommend them. They certainly, uh, you know, were out and about. You could see that they were there. It wasn't hit and miss. Uh, did, did they find any huge damaged areas? Do you know? Uh, there's a very bad section of pipe along Knudsen, and that's where we're waiting for the evaluation from Rains to say this is where we need to focus. And then, of course, last month, you remember the picture of the huge route that mm -hmm. we yeah, pulled that. out on Catherine Court? <laughs> and then, then uh, along the Thoroughfare Canal between Park Lane and Horse Mill, there was about two pickup trucks loads of large rocks were pulled from that section. Amazing. Yeah. Well, those are obstructions, but yeah. what we're all hoping is that and I learned this from Ted, uh, looking at the the chart at the wastewater plant. We saw if we saw a million gallons of water in a day, sometimes we have two million. Not when, even when it's not raining, we have two million gallons flowing through the plant. So we're getting groundwater into the sanitary system. And on the this bad section you're mentioning on Knudsen, is it possible we're getting a lot of infiltration into the sewer there? Not much infiltration there, but the line is in very bad shape and need of probably replacement. So you are getting some, but at that depth, you're not getting much, and it's not close. And it's actually on the uh, east side of Newton, so you're not getting canal water in there. All right, so <laughs> our hope is some, through this whole process uh, of all the Across sewer systems, at some point yes. we say, ah, we found a spot where we're getting a lot of water, and when it rains harder, it just comes in faster. So we'll keep looking for that problem. Yes, sir. But there's some place there's a source of water coming in that's not drinking water. Um, that's processed through our homes. <laughs> Do you know how many years they've been looking to find out where that water's coming from? Um, I don't know, Les. I would say approximately 30 years we've been looking for where the water's coming from. And we keep telling them it's all the footing drains. Yes. You're right. And, of course, they run even when it's not raining. That's right. Oh. But and this is all the homes that were built prior to, what, 1973, was it? Right? Uh, or the ones that have been connected well, the, illegally the biggest, since then? The biggest section we have of, of houses that have footing drains problems is between Horse Mill and Stout Street. That whole section of Pottawatomie Woods in there was built with the footing drains hooked to the sanitary sewer. Which was legal at the time. Not really. Well, they but passed somebody, the law. Somebody misread what the sewer ordinance said. And they were they were hooking this up, and I'll tell you who's who caught them, and and it was Richard Slagay says, you can't do that. Well, we've been doing it for years. Well, that's not what it says in the sewer ordinance thing. You can't do it. And the first house that had to put a sump pump in was Tony Kraus up on Bridge Road, and boy was he mad. <laughs>
Well, I, and I, I, don't, I don't discount what you say is accurate, but I also remember in my career that in 1972 with the Clean Water Bill, they passed a law at the national level, and, it, and then all the states adopted one that said you can no longer connect the footing drain into the sanitary sewer. And I know that's the law, but a lot of builders did it anyway. So they, once they passed their inspection, they just capped off um, whatever was going into to um, sump pump, and they diverted it back to the sanitary. I mean, yeah. It, when I was working, I caught done. a few of them doing that. The lines that were going into the sump pump, you look down into the sump pump, and you see this screw sticking out of the, the side of the the sump pump pit. You go, what's that for? Was after a, after you inspect it and it looks good, what they do is they take the screw out and go down there with a saw and saw it out. So then instead of going to the, the out, it goes right to the sanitary. Some pump never runs. Yep. Well, um, I'm glad it went well. If you recall, we had a long months debating how to award it. Like six months it took us to get it awarded. And uh, at some point, I'd like you to arrange for a video to come in, maybe at our budget meeting in February, and just show 10 minutes of it, what this, what it looks like, and particularly this bad section. You might want to show the bad section if you get the report from the engineers by then. You Absolutely. You ought to be able to. You, want, you said February meeting? That's our budget meeting. Oh, our budgets. Yeah. And um, I think everybody would be interested in seeing that. I would. Lenny would. Brenda would. So. Anyway, um, me too. Uh, my final comment would be on the budget. Said we were going to only spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars every year, so we didn't have to raise sewer rates for this program. We're going to run into a lot of repairs, and if I remember right, we budgeted another hundred thousand dollars for repairs of what we find. Correct. I don't know what this repair you're mentioning is going to cost on Knudsen, but uh, I think we have to keep in mind what we'd like to do is do more, but I'm not in favor of raising the sewer rates if we can avoid it. Uh, yeah, I would. I, I myself would rather add another year to it. Rates are high enough as it is. So. I think I think we can get we'd get by with that and do it that way. So anyway, First um, up. yeah, thank you. Thanks, John, for a good report. Appreciate it. And it's going to be summarized in not too copious minutes, but the, the major features. <laughs> minutes are very exhausting to read sometimes. They're very good, but anyway. Enough said on that. That's my report. The minutes are too long. I think he means if you're going to have them that long. Well, let's go around the table. <laughs> um, chairman doesn't have any report tonight except to wish every, everybody, all of you, a happy holidays and everybody watching. Uh, so, commissioner's reports. We'll start with Jim. Uh, I have I have nothing other than the same. Uh, in fact, I'll uh, wish our audience a Merry Christmas. Uh, since everybody will be doing everybody else, I'll take care of them. Perfect. Yeah, but uh, certainly uh, to all of my fellow commissioners, and that includes you and Lorinda and you, John. So, very Merry Christmas to you and your families. Thank you. Nothing to report except happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everybody. Brenda. Yep, Merry Christmas, holidays to everyone. Go ahead. Yeah, this was a great meeting. Santa Claus obviously <laughs> took the stage. <laughs> I don't know about that, but anyway. <laughs> Phil. I have two things. Uh, question, Lorinda. Refuge pickup, is that continuing year-round now? It, I thought it used to end at the end of November. Yard waste ends on uh, December the 15th, so this is the last week for it, but we charge year-round for it. We have Okay. It. I, I, for yeah. some reason, I thought it ended at the end of November, and I was thinking... It used to. A few years ago, we extended okay. it, yes. So we extended it December 15th for the audience and people listening. Yes, so this is the, the last week. Oh, yeah, it'll be their, okay. their pickup day this week. Is, this is the last week for it. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing I have is, this is going to be a little bit long. Please indulge me. Uh, I've always been concerned about what I call signed sewage on the island. In other words, where road signs just get to be excessive, they make no sense, and... Uh, One's cropped up of recent, and I'd like to just 
briefly go through it. It starts when you enter South Point off of Grow. Years ago, there used to be a sign there that said, no trucks. And when I questioned, well, how are delivery trucks supposed to get here? They said, well, that means no through trucks. I said, well, there can't be any through trucks because there's no place to go. So they changed that sign, and, they, and I have a copy of this. I'll hand it to you. that now says, no outlet. So as you enter South Point, there's a sign, very appropriately, that says, no outlet. So you proceed down, and you turn right on Swan Drive. And this is what's just happened recently. As you turn on to Swan Drive, there's another sign now that says, no outlet. So you proceed across the little bridge to where it dead ends into Swan Island Drive. And now at that point, there are two signs. <laughs> one says dead end with an arrow pointing south. The other one says dead end with an arrow pointing north. Gets better. <laughs> Turn north and go north on Swan Island Drive. And when you get to the end of Swan Island Drive, there's a big sign that says, road ends. <laughs> so this is just absolutely insane. Now, there's a little history to this. When the person built the house at the end of Swan Island Drive, the north end, huh? there was a circular turnaround there. Basically, the house and what he did with his driveway eliminated it. My wife went to the township and said, they took away the turnaround at the north end of Swan Island Drive. Well, the township inspector at the time said, that's Wayne County's problem. That's a road. She went to Wayne County, and after several discussions with them, this is years ago, this is eight, nine years, whenever that house was built, Wayne County just did nothing about it. But now they've come in and they've put in this series of ridiculous <laughs> signs that really doesn't solve any problem. There's still no turnaround at the north end of Swan Island Drive. The neighbor on the west side of it has now put a cone in his driveway and has put his own sign up that says, not public access. So I, I just, I would feel that maybe it's time to revisit the problem. The problem wasn't a lack of signs. The problem was that they advocated their right away to the turnaround when this resident built his house on the north end of Swan Island. But I, I just, I, I just think it's ridiculous when the the ambience of our community gets ruined by n unnecessary, ridiculous signs. And unfortunately, what happens with me is. I, when I start seeing them, I, that's all I see. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's my gripe, and unfortunately, it does not solve Les's problem of no street signs. Uh, actually, actually, Phil, uh, as an answer to all those signs, they took away Les's sign. I guess so. <laughs> there was the trade-off. But Lorinda, I'll give you these pictures, and if you if you don't mind. That's all I have. Merry Christmas, everybody. Well, Phil, uh, <laughs> hold, hold on. Now, would you like the signs removed? Is that your what your thinking is? Pardon me. Would you like the signs removed? Some of them. Well, I think they. I think they're redundant. I don't think they serve any purpose. I mean, obviously, the the one sign that says no outlet, I can understand that. The first sign it replaced the sign that said no trucks, and and I thought that that was very appropriate. And I've seen a couple other signs like that on the island. Uh, but then when it's followed up by a second no outlet, dead end with two arrows, and then road ends at the end of this small short street, it just didn't make any sense. So. Well, I hear you. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just speculate that you know there's something called the Uniform Traffic Code. And I'm guessing that Somebody came out and looked at that. I mean, I don't know why they didn't look at the intersection. Or somebody complained that their cars were coming down and turning around in their so, driveway or something like that. I, I really don't know. But sign pollution. What do you want to, do you want sign to, pollution. Is there anything you want to do with it? 
Well, I'd, I, I would like to revisit why there isn't a turnaround there. I mean, on the south end of Swan Island Drive, where the T is, there originally had been a circular turnaround there, and the uh, uh, there was an, a, a land swap, an easement change that took out the circular turnaround. This was 50 years ago, and put in the T at the south end of Swan Island Drive. And uh, unfortunately, when the house was built on the east side there, they made part of that T their driveway. So a lot of people don't realize that the T really extends as far to the east as it does to the west. But you go a little bit to the east and you hit the, the residence driveway. But you, you just mentioned the south end. Yeah, but, there, the, but the north end had the, had the same ability to turn around, yet when the resident built the house there, they, I think a telephone pole got put in and the circular part just got paved over and there's just, uh, there's no way to turn around on the north end of uh, Swan Island Drive. Except in somebody's driveway. Except in somebody's driveway, or what appears to be somebody's driveway. Is there room to reestablish the turnaround? I would say there, there could be, but some, somebody would have to go in and say, that's not your property, and there, that's a, a road easement, a road right of way. And that's where the, 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 the problem got shoveled over to the, uh, uh, to the county from the township. The township told my wife, that's not, that's not our, and this was years ago, that's, that's not our problem, that's a road. And and the the Wayne County did nothing. They you know she made several calls to Wayne County and nothing ever came of it. Well, they got the sewer lift station down there also. Correct. That's on the 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 east side. Right. Yeah. But I mean, we could look at the. I could. I wouldn't mind going down and looking at the plat to see see how that's platted. That would be easy to do. We can pull the plat for you. Yeah. Pull the plat. We can pull the plat, but there's. Um, it could be too that they may have requested that to be abandoned too. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't. Brianna, I just can't. I don't recall it though. I remember it no. was a big. It was a big deal when the house was being built. Well, the guy that's in that house right now wasn't the guy that built it. That's Jerry Shepard is in there, but the guy that built it uh, is Mark. Mark Marvin. Yeah. Marvin. And him and Jerry swapped houses. Right. He went up to Westcroft and Jerry right. came down there. Unless and you know too much. <laughs> you know too much history. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, and I, even whether, whether they reestablish the, the turnaround at that point is, it's, it still seems like there's an abundance of signs. For that little Same section of road, absolutely. Right. It was yeah. funny to listen to you and just talk about it. Goes on and on. We know the road ends. <laughs> Here we just want one sign on Park yeah. Parkway Boulevard. There, and right. We can't, can't get, get it. less one sign, and yet we have all these. But anyway, I've taken enough. Time. We could have John pull one of those dead end signs out and put it by Les's. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Lorinda, you're going to pull the plat map for that, would you? Yeah, I can. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I, recently I saw Lorinda's plat book. Now, we have a lot of historical documents, but hers is Mine's 25 uh, years something old. for the antiquities. <laughs> um, it's got all my notes in it. Looks like a real historical documents all falling apart and everything else. <laughs> so It is. It anyway. is. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll, she'll get you a copy of the plat map to start. Be fine. Okay. Thanks for your comments. I thought, did everybody get the email from Phil? Mm -hmm. yeah. the, on YouTube that displayed the, mm -hmm. the um, I thought that's that what you were going to talk about that that's, that's, the yeah, pothole patching like, truck yeah. the pothole I thought that was very interesting and I tried to uh, with my lack of technical ability tried to see where it was manufactured I I, is it a European manufacturer do you know it, it was yeah I mean the one one video showed it being used in Australia and then the other video I couldn't tell where it was it did but uh I'll try and zoom in and, and see the manufacturer on it. Maybe there there were two videos. <laughs> I only saw the one. Well, I only sent one. <laughs> there were two. But uh, well, that, we use it here anyway because of the bridge weight restriction. There you go. <laughs> it was quite a machine. It was, almost looked fantasy like. It just shows the direction technology is going, and you know we we should get more towards the leading edge of it. And and by that was sent to me by a concerned resident on the island. Oh, really? I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, a resident sent that video uh, 
said, you might be interested in this. You see it, John? The machine cuts out the pothole and picks it up and puts a new one in. All right. Well, thank you, Phil. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot where we were now. Back to Les, the Santa. Yes. Question. Yes. Park Lane Water Main and Dallas Drive Water Main. Are they on hold till spring? No. No. The uh, trying to work through Wayne County. On the, I know the Park Lane because Sohel gave me the Dallas one today. has already been approved. The, they're, they're working with Wayne County to try to waive the fees. That that's going to be successful. Though they're, they're going to waive the fees, I guess. Are we going to still try and get them done this oh, year? As soon as we get the yeah. permit. As soon as we get the permit, we'll push ahead. Okay. Well, I don't know if it'll be done this year. Well, they'll be done next, next. year. <laughs> they can build them in the winter time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my next question is: uh, After we got the PRV valve fixed, how has our flows been? Have they kind of equaled out? Yes, sir. Yep. I haven't calculated the percentage, but it's close to fifty-fifty now. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many water main breaks have you had since? Two. Just two. That's Knock wonderful. on wood. Knock on wood. Okay, uh, that's all I got. But all you're allowed is two questions. That's it. Well, th this is well. I was sitting down there waiting for the gatekeeper to come and and knock out the gate for me to get in here. I was listening to the radio and they were saying that Mick Jagger is 75 years old and he's got a three-year-old <laughs> toddler, mm -hmm. and they said that this little kid looks just exactly like him. I feel sorry for that kid. That kid's got to be ugly as sin. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what does this have to do with public services? <laughs> with that, I'm going to say Merry Christmas to all and everybody. <laughs> okay, Ted, you get the final word here. Yeah, okay. I just want to thank everybody on the commission. You guys have done a heck of a job this year. We've had mostly successes, a couple of failures, but for the most part, you worked your butts off. You did a great job for the township. You managed the biggest budget on the island, and I'm proud to be a part of this group. Uh, and with that, Merry Christmas, well, Happy New you. Year to everybody. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Okay, John. Nothing more at this time. Merry Christmas to everybody. Done flushing? Hydrant? Oh, we're still, no, we're we're still, still working on winter flushing. Oh. Okay, and Lorinda. Merry Christmas, everyone. That's it? Mm -hmm. right. In case the rest of you guys don't know this, Saturday was John's birthday. Thanks, Lou. Oh. Happy birthday, John. Thank Happy you. birthday, John. Happy birthday, John. Thank you, everyone. This John. Oh, that yeah. John. Yeah. Hey, Bob. Well, happy birthday, John. The Thank young you, John. The young John. Oh, I, pardon me? <laughs> the young John. Uh, uh, let's have a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.